Hello, welcome to the Thursday, April 20th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today looked again at malicious Excel files. That's probably one of the most common ways that you will find hackers trying to sneak malicious code into your network. Now, filtering these Excel files and analyzing them is of course quite important. And Xavier is taking a look at them, in particular those Excel files that store, for example, the URL that's being used to download additional data in hidden columns and cells within the Excel file. And of course, as we are used to from Xavier, he also provides us with the Python scripts to do this all ourselves. So all you have to do is run his Python script and you get the content back of uh, these cells. He also has a little Python script that will then extract binaries that may come as part of the Excel spreadsheet. And if you used some recent Bose wireless headphones, you may have noticed that they come with a little app that you can install on your smartphone. Well, it turns out according to a complaint filed in court yesterday that uh, this app will also report back to Bose what you are listening to. Now the court document doesn't specify how it was discovered that this is what the app was doing, but the complaint is specific enough in saying that segment.io, which is a marketing analysis company, was actually at the receiving end of this data, transmitted where the serial number of the headphone and then what kind of music or podcast or the like the listener was listening to. It'll be interesting to see what comes out of this. You can still use your headphones without the Bose Connect app, but part of the selling point of these headsets is that you can control them with this app. And Microsoft is now going all the way with its authenticator application. Passwords are no longer required, but still optional if you're signing into your Microsoft account. If you no longer want to use a password, then all you need to do is approve the sign in with your smartphone or smart device or enter a token provided by the application. Overall, it makes some sense to do it this way. Of course, makes the account a little bit less secure. But the assumption here is that passwords often do not really provide much meaningful security because they're so often reused. And of course, weak passwords are being used. The security burden now, of course, lies solely with the phone. If your phone gets stolen and is not sufficiently protected, then of course, NetHacker has full access to your accounts. And open source file sharing applications Nextcloud and OwnCloud do include passwords as part of their bug reports. Now, this in itself is of course not good, but what makes it even worse is that these bug reports are automatically posted to the public GitHub repository for these projects. So by searching these GitHub repositories and bug reports that that are associated with it, you may be able to discover users, usernames and passwords. The affected projects have cleaned and scrubbed the data by now. Now, for the most part, they replaced it with just weak passwords like one, two, three, four, five, six. That's, of course, a somewhat manual process, apparently. So there are some allegations that there may still be some real passwords left. And a quite nice blog post, Wilfred Kirsch is detailing how he found a vulnerability in He's been up using the cloud fuzzing framework. Fuzzing, of course, is something that is very much made for the cloud in that it often can be easily parallelized where you have multiple processes running at the same time. And of course, the speed at which you can create new test cases is important. The entire experiment only took about five hours, uh, which would have cost 25 cents in EC2 with Amazon's cloud. However, the first 750 hours are free, so it actually didn't cost anything. 
And if you asked Remco for his source code for the Homocraft detection tool that he wrote about on Monday, it's public now on GitHub. So if you want to take a look, you can download it there. It's a pretty short and simple Go script. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. I'll also add in the show notes today a link to Friday's webcast where I'll be talking about NoSQL security, what to look for when you're installing these new types of databases. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.